on. So, um, uh, as a DevOps consultant with with Matrix, uh, Brian's responsible for for bringing customers to the forefront of uh, innovation and and to improve organizations um, organizations operational efficiency while reducing overhead costs. He spent most of his career um, in automation. Um, across architecture, infrastructure, software delivery. So he's, he's um, experienced in a lot of the um, uh, configuration management tools. So Terraform, Chef, Jenkins, Ansible are some of those tools. And then the, the scripting technologies, Python, Bash, Ruby, and all sorts of other open source um, solutions. Um, so he's uh, worked in various roles across uh, software development, continuous delivery, um, to product and release management, application deployment, cloud architecture. So um, enough said, um, this will be a great session. Um, Brian's super talented guy is a great consultant for us. So uh, I give you Brian Green. All right, thanks Victor and JV uh, for the introduction there. I'm looking forward to bringing you guys uh, a presentation on the value of automation and continuous delivery which really talks through what DevOps is and, and how the components of DevOps allow organizations to, uh, to move and forward in automating uh, their digital platform and showing you a couple ways of how uh, that is accomplished. So hope you guys enjoy. So a little bit about myself again, I, I work now uh, with Matrix as a DevOps coaching leader I uh, spent pretty much all of my career in IT automation, um, as JV mentioned, across software development, continuous delivery, uh, product release management, and architecture. Uh, the last seven years, I've, I've spent working specifically in DevOps and, and cloud environments. So uh, any of you guys are, are looking or in college or are looking um, for a field to get into, definitely consider uh, cloud environments. Uh, and focusing on um, possibly one uh, in particular, uh, either Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud, because that seems to be the way the market is going. Uh, so I've worked, again, across retail, uh, fintech, and healthcare companies. So I'm definitely looking forward to this partnership with BDPA. Um, thanks again, Victor, and, and look forward to hopefully providing some DevOps content in the future as well. So uh, today we're gonna start out talking through some of the benefits and reasons why companies are moving towards DevOps. We'll uh, discuss what continuous integration and, and continuous delivery is. I'll uh, we'll talk in detail about uh, continuous in integration and delivery pipelines and how that plays into why we need automation to enable our ability to, to really drive business applications and services. So uh, again, We'll talk briefly about some of the tools um, and how they're utilized, but mainly we'll focus on people and uh, process and how some of those roles play in the DevOps organization. And feel free if you guys have any questions to, uh, you know, leave uh, that question in the chat or if you want to, um, you know, stop me here, I, I don't mind at all. <clears throat> so in order for me to talk a little bit about what DevOps is, I think it's best to start with how we got here. And so uh, I don't know if many of you are familiar with Waterfall uh, or uh, definitely Agile concepts, those of you that were with us last week. And Waterfall is really a traditional way of software development where you basically have different phases or stages that the business development and operations uh, perform work. So in one phase you may have, and, and Waterfall is pictured on the left here, um, you'll have a requirements gathering phase where you are determining what are uh, needs of the system and what needs to be implemented. Uh, and so that moves forward into the system design and implementation phase, uh, also testing and deployment and then uh, moving forward into maintenance, right? So the operational support of that product or service that you're delivering, uh, again, from a software perspective, over time, you have to provide regular maintenance. And it's similar to uh, a vehicle, right? Uh, once you purchase a vehicle from a dealership, right? Uh, you still have to continuously 
get that vehicle checked through service, uh, oil changes, right? Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that uh, from a software perspective, when you're delivering uh, the components of uh, your services, that you're properly walking them through those phases. So as you can see, waterfall was really a very sequential process, uh, moving from one phase to the next. So uh, it provided a lot of structure, uh, but there's really a high time to, uh, to market, which means it takes a while to actually receive the value that you're uh, developing, right? And then often uh, in technology, things change. And so with Waterfall, it isn't very uh, uh, fluid in that you can make changes. It's not agile at all, right? And so uh, during the, the 90s, uh, Scrum and Kanban and, and really agile began to flourish. And it really was around the time of the dot com boom, right? Uh, where the uh, technology started to drive the business processes and services. Uh, and so now that we're using Agile to more quickly deploy services, uh, we need now a better uh, tool and process to uh, deliver those services. So uh, while Agile allowed us to continuously iterate through those development and testing uh, software needs, uh, it really was intended to uh, replace Waterfall completely. Now, DevOps, on the other hand, really is intended to work alongside Agile. Uh, and so um, it's important for you guys to, to really understand that in most of the Fortune 500 organizations, uh, they're going to be using some form of Agile, right? So it's important to learn what Agile is in depth. I know uh, the series that Josh uh, brought to us last week um, uh, really talked through in detail what um, some of those concepts were. So definitely look into that presentation and have a better understanding of how Agile, uh, some of the pros and cons of Agile here that we list and then also in DevOps, how they apply uh, to deploying the CI/CD pipelines, which you'll learn today. All right, so, you know, it's, it's really fitting again that we're having that conversation. Uh, and, and Josh, I believe that, that that meeting last week has uh, how agility is changing the role of, of project management. Because uh, DevOps is really an offspring of, of agile software. A development. And so it was born out of the need to keep up with it, that increased software velocity. So many of uh, the advancements in the last decade, uh, you know, looking at the slide before, you'll see that agile development has, has really achieved uh, and exposed some of the needs for a, a more of a holistic approach to end-to-end uh, -end software development. And so when we say agile development, it's really an uh, umbrella term. So when you hear the term uh, this evening, think of mostly the uh, scrum or combine methodologies, uh, uh, lean or extreme programming. Uh, and so that push again from waterfall to agile really uh, birthed the DevOps process or, or mindset, if you will. Uh, and so you'll see that DevOps, uh, when we use DevOps, we attempt to solve some of those challenges that we faced uh, and speeding up that development. So what DevOps really means is that there are really no walls or gates or transitions that we typically see in organizations that are using waterfall uh, and going from stages or phases to phases. Uh, whereas it's a more iterative approach with DevOps and uh, both the developer and the operations, as you'll see in future slides, they participate in that process of software delivery. Now, historically, um, let's talk a little bit about what a developer and a QA roles are for a moment. Uh, mostly uh, developers use a process called test-driven development. 
which essentially is where you're writing tests before you're actually developing the software. And so you're not releasing that software until those tests actually pass. So it's, you know, it's one of those strategies that we've been really using uh, as developers for, for, you know, quite some time. Uh, and what we really want to do is in DevOps, apply some of those concepts to infrastructure as well. Uh, so for a developer, this does really a couple things. Uh, it allows for them to move more quickly because again, if I am creating the tests while I'm writing the code, uh, I can essentially deploy that software quicker given that the tests are included in that delivery process. So it would be synonymous with uh, a production pipeline of cars and assuring that all of the components that I'm putting in the car are properly tested before I'm delivering it um, through that through that pipeline. Um, any questions so far? All right. So this also allowed for the developer to create better uh, programmer uh, programs and and really a higher code quality. So that's, uh, you know, even the software that's delivered on your phones today, uh, it's been, you know, thoroughly tested through a delivery pipeline or process before it actually reaches, uh, you know, your phone for you to, um, you know, do some or perform some work or play a game, right? Uh, so, you know, if you, when you're thinking about CI, CD and, and uh, uh, DevOps, think about ways to, uh, that we're automating the process of delivering software to your phone or to an environment when we're thinking about uh, true Fortune 500 companies. So historically, uh, you know, managing IT infrastructure uh, was really a manual process. And unfortunately, this picture here is a, a true picture of a data center uh, where applications would essentially be deployed on the machines that a, an infrastructure uh, engineer would uh, plug into uh, in a data center into an environment and have to essentially wire up a system uh, and so this manual process that really happened before uh, the 90s uh, or, or 2000s uh, really has been uh, replaced with cloud provisioning and cloud environments. And this allows us to uh, save on cost, right? Increase our ability to scale so we can deploy more services now. We don't have to wait on an engineer to uh, plug in a system and install some software and then um, install another application that allows for uh, the development team to validate that everything is working properly. Uh, so we know that everyone needs infrastructure. And so what DevOps attempts to do is to allow the developers to create infrastructure so that they can move even faster. Uh, does that make sense, anyone? And I know some of us have, have joined, again, I'll, uh, I'll send out the presentation after the meeting. Um, but again, we're wanting to talk through <clears throat> what CICD is and uh, how automation uh, through DevOps pipelines can be achieved uh, through software delivery. So here's an example of a, a software delivery or a development workflow. Uh, the developer would essentially write the code um, and then create or push their changes via some uh, what we call a pull request. So if you can imagine, uh, you know, code is really software that is written as a text file. And so when I update this text file, similar to I'm updating a, a you know, a Google Doc, I want to essentially kick off the tests that need to be performed before I 
send this file to my manager, for instance. So that's essentially what software, what we're doing in the software process is essentially certifying uh, the components of the software before we're delivering it to our customers. And so here again is an example of a process sort of using uh, waterfall. Uh, and you can see that there are very let's so some time consuming processes, right? So the, those time consuming processes are those that are manual, where we actually have a human performing some work. So, you know, actually deploying to a dev environment, uh, installing software, purchasing that software, configuring that environment, right? Um, updating that environment. So what, again, DevOps attempts to do is really focus on those areas that are uh, long hauls, if you will, in, in, in the process and that are time consuming. Uh, we attempt to automate those process through our delivery. Uh, so before it will look something like this, and then afterwards, <clears throat> we are looking to remove the manual processes so that we can get to our goal faster, which is deploying to production. Now this allows really for, uh, you know, more consistent or, or you know, more quality product. Um, and a lot of people wonder why, you know, Apple, you know, a lot of their software is developed so well, and it's, it really comes down to the testing. Uh, and really ensuring that you are running either automated tests, regression tests, um, tests that ensure that the software doesn't break previous uh, builds or break previous releases that may have been um, certified before. Any questions so far? It's a good info. Oh, great. Thanks for that feedback. All right. So again, we want to bake a lot of those components into that delivery process. And so uh, as you can see from uh, the previous slide, uh, that's, you know, removing those components, um, we're replacing them with some level of automation. Uh, so we're still performing those same steps that are required to release our software, uh, but we want to automate the components so that we don't have to manually perform those tests each and every time. And if you think about it, uh, you know, there are, you know, hundreds and thousands of, of pieces of software that uh, companies and organizations manage. And so you could see how cumbersome that could be if they were doing so, uh, doing so manually. Uh, so the DevOps handbook, which is written uh, by Gene Kim, who was one of the DevOps evangelists, which I'd recommend. Um, he talks about the definition of, of, of what DevOps is. And he says it's the combination of, of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. And that's really at the crux uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, what DevOps is. Uh, and what it's not is, uh, it's not a, a new tool, right? So um, there's not a, a tool that provides all of what DevOps is trying to accomplish. And while the DevOps community has created a lot of, you know, cool tools and many of the, the uh, the, the tools that uh, DevOps recommend, you know, can't be done without, or the, the, the processes and standardizations, they can't be done without tools. Uh, the tools themselves don't mean that you're achieving uh, DevOps. Uh, and so as it, you know, is referred, uh, DevOps uh, allows the collaboration of, of Dev and uh, the IT ops divisions um, to collaborate uh, and achieve the goals that they would have normally done in their separate silos. All right. So you have to 
you know, there are organizations that often say, you know, we have a DevOps team. Uh, and usually that is an inclination that they, they may not be doing DevOps in the right way. Because again, we're, we still are going back to the sort of waterfall process where we're handing off work from uh, one team to the other. So what we really want and what we work with organizations with uh, here at Matrix is uh, for everyone to be following a DevOps type strategy, similar to agile, right? Or similar to security. We want to ensure that everybody is applying the same level of security and compliance when releasing software and not necessarily relying on a security and compliance team. So DevOps is the same way. Uh, and uh, again, this approach, this approach can be performed at a software or an infrastructure delivery level. Uh, it's not a new role. Um, again, the, uh, the, the DevOps uh, engineers, or, or you'll find that there are uh, developers who, who perform, uh, you know, DevOps, you know, methodologies, right, um, within those confines uh, on a on a daily, but they may not necessarily have the title of a DevOps engineer. So uh, definitely better understand uh, what is encompassing in the role uh, and, and not necessarily get hung up on the actual position <clears throat> when it comes to uh, whether an organization is, is actually doing DevOps or performing DevOps in the right way. Can I jump in and ask you a question? And I think Demetrius also just posted about uh, DevSecOps. But one of my questions to you, Brian, uh, from your experience, when, if you dealt with an organization that predominantly followed that waterfall approach, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. and that's historically just what the employees kind of leaned on, uh, when they're trying to transition into more of that product model and, and utilize, you know, kind of that self-sufficient team approach, um, what would you recommend as some strategies that they can employ so they're not really leaning on, hey, I have a security team, I have a DevOps team, and, and, and that work is kind of being handled from one group. Like what, what's some, uh, some tidbits that you can share in regards to that? Because I know even at State Farm, mm -hmm. uh, with us recently going into the product model for more of that project structure, um, I see that as being one of the challenges. We're still siloed into teams. Right, right, right. And that's really a challenge uh, that uh, isn't unique to your organization. Uh, and it really starts at a leadership level, unfortunately. Um, and I, I should say it, it, it could start at a grassroots level, but leadership will definitely need to buy into this process because it usually requires some level of budget. Um, but it definitely, uh, what I would recommend is uh, really evaluating from a cultural perspective whether or not the organization is ready to take on uh, some of what is recommended in the DevOps uh, standards and, and, and principles or methodologies. Uh, and then from there, actually working with um, possibly a vendor, bringing them in to provide an assessment to better understand where some of those shortcomings are. Uh, from a training perspective, uh, maybe there uh, is a flux of tools that are used that, or where we could provide some level of standards uh, or simply migrating from one platform uh, to another, right? But again, if, if <clears throat> uh, and I, I warn a lot of my customers uh, with this as well, you know, when we start some of these transformations, we may not in with all of the resources that we began with. Uh, and so it's important to understand that uh, there may be personnel changes that need to happen in order to achieve some of our goals. Uh, so <clears throat> I definitely uh, recommend starting with your management and uh, provide them with some uh, insight on how uh, this level of in innovation can help streamline or better propel your organization forward um, and then um, from there sort of strategize on um, 
you know, what the, the best steps forward are. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. And, and I will say this to the audience. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but uh, BDPA Atlanta is a, a talk back to me type of culture. Uh, so we encourage you to ask questions, uh, receive clarity on anything that our experts can help you out with. Um, you know, that, that's how we grow together and learn together. So I encourage you all uh, as much as possible, feel free to unmute uh, if you can and, and ask any questions to our experts that may be of value to you. I do see another question in here, Breon, uh, more so in regards to, to the topic. So in, in, in what you've been doing in, in different uh, companies that you've engaged, do you see this being uh, a trend that's happening now where more companies are going to this product structure? Uh, absolutely. And I would say both Agile and DevOps. I believe there was a Gartner report that by uh, 2024 that 85% of the Fortune 500 companies will be moving uh, to Agile or moving forward with some form of DevOps. Uh, so, uh, you know, all other organizations really fall in line with what those companies do. Um, and I would say that the top one through five are all, uh, uh, you know, all in on agile and DevOps. So uh, it's definitely a trend. Um, obviously, uh, as you know, things progress, right? Especially given uh, where we are with COVID, um, you know, you know, there may be more capable processes that are uh, developed in the future, but they would likely, uh, you know, essentially be connected to some form of Agile or DevOps. Um, and so I think definitely something that you, you'd be, uh, you know, uh, you want to definitely invest in uh, sooner than later. Um, and so uh, I, I, I'd recommend it, uh, Agile or DevOps. Hey, Brian, this is uh, Demetrius Williams. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, uh, just a quick comment or a uh, question for you as well. Um, so it just feels like this is more of a, a mindset shift mm -hmm. in terms of how the teams are working, the product team and DevOps working that to, to um, actually deliver um, value quicker by them all working mm -hmm. together but instead of working in silos like they mm -hmm. once did at one time. So you're constantly getting that feedback and helping DevOps, DevOps to, uh, you know, move quicker. So. Absolutely, uh, and and that really is a great segue into, uh, you know, how uh, those silos right are, are really broken down. And so with the customer working with us on the delivery process, that feedback loop is shortened. And so thus, if there are issues. Uh, we are discovering them much earlier in the process. And thus we can uh, send out those updates that, need, that are needed to fix those issues uh, in a more streamlined way and we release a more quality product. Uh, now, uh, another good example, and I know a, a lot of um, uh, you guys probably use Facebook, uh, but they actually encourage a lot of user feedback. And so you can get a part or be a part of a lot of the pilot groups. And that's really a, an example of uh, the Facebook engineering team using CI, CD uh, to their advantage, uh, which we'll talk about a little more. Uh, but again, if you have a real live customer providing feedback, you can see how you could create a more quality product because uh, again, you're able to fix any bugs or any issues before they're reaching the masses. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, just to add on that, Buran, I think to your point earlier, that's that test-driven development is actually gonna help you with that as well, catching those bugs Absolutely. before they get into the, the customer's hands. Um, Absolutely. And regression testing and for developers introducing, um, you know, new features that may break other features, so. Correct, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, so now let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the components of DevOps and the, uh, the infamous DevOps pipeline. So uh, continuous integration allows for developers to work together seamlessly 
on the same code base. So again, the reference that I talked to you uh, earlier and, and for those of us who are actually developers and more experienced, um, really just using this example to, to draw home uh, like what actually is going on. But imagine, you know, uh, collaborating on a, uh, you know, a, a Google Doc, right? And again, we want to ensure that all the changes that are made, which, uh, which acts as a code base, uh, are essentially going through the proper checks before we're sending this document off to be fully vetted uh, by the customer. And so uh, those changes in the software and those components that are required to package it, that is what essentially continuous integration is. And it really works alongside of Agile in the in the planning phase so again whenever you hear uh agile um you you know it's not necessarily uh it, it i should say it, it works alongside of of devops whereas agile previously uh replaced waterfall devops isn't intended to replace agile at all and so that's why I said and previously, uh, you know, speaking to the gentleman that asked the question, it's really a good investment either either way with Agile and DevOps. Obviously, if you're more technical, definitely try to go the more uh, the DevOps route. Um, and I'll leave some material here that you can you can definitely read. Uh, and from a project management perspective, uh, Agile as well would would uh, definitely be advantageous for you to invest in your future in. Hey, hey, Brian, there was a, a question that came in the chat. It, it said uh, from Stephanie, do you find that getting developer buy-in for implementing DevOps is challenging? Uh, no, absolutely. Actually, the developers usually are already uh, bought in given that the process for releasing software in general has always been to include uh, test driven development and include processes to certify the delivery of of my software right uh, I find that a lot of the challenge comes uh, from an organization standpoint from the infrastructure side because they're used to sort of having their hands or operations right having their hands on some of those components and with DevOps you're sort of sharing that responsibility now <clears throat> does that answer your question Hopefully. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. Thanks, man. So uh, continuous delivery or CD focuses on the uh, automated deployment or transfer or software to, uh, to a, a given environment. So think test QA or prod when, we, when we're talking about environments. Uh, so the ultimate goal of, of CD is to bring software to production at the touch of a button. So the tests that are performed automatically, uh, they're performed immediately after the, the development is completed. So the developer gets the feedback immediately with DevOps opposed to, in some cases, where you send out a development change and uh, it takes maybe two or three weeks to go through some change control process. So at the, at the point of me actually releasing the software, it's now broken because it's two weeks later, right? That this software is being delivered. So it's really important uh, that, and which is why again, software uh, developers really love DevOps because they can thrive in it because they have full control. <clears throat> uh, and so um, Agile again is intended to work alongside of DevOps with throughout the, the deployment process. Any questions, any other questions? And I apologize, I'm, um, I guess as the presenter, I'm not able to see some of the chat. So definitely JV, if you can keep any questions uh, coming, uh, I'm more than happy to answer them. Victor and I will keep you up to date. <laughs> All right, so uh, again, continuous integration is the software development practice of uh regularly integrating that code or those changes to some shared repository um so you know this usually would happen like once or, or several times a day but with devops we can release 
software thousands of times a day. Um, and so each commit, uh, and when a developer makes a change to some uh, code or some file in the code, uh, that commit triggers a build. And that build essentially runs through some testing pipeline in an automated fashion. And this can really help identify if anything is broken or if any changes are needed before we're actually releasing that to, um, to our customers. Um, and so uh, continuous deployment is, is a process to deploy the code in production through that testing uh, pipeline. Uh, so while continuous delivery enables DevOps teams to, to be ready to, uh, to really deliver any time to production. So that's essentially that push button delivery uh, method is what allows you to, um, or is what continuous deployment allows for you to uh, provide to your customers. And um, now it's important to understand that many companies, uh, they mistake continuous deployment for continuous delivery. Uh, and so because of that, they sort of mishandle some of the terms and, and even creating the pipeline. So continuous delivery provides the control over uh, the functionality and uh, the rollout of the product, right? So continuous deployment is, is really just that business decision to release this product. So you really want to focus on automating that entire process so that once again, the developer is done with their software updates or if, uh, you know, release software to fix some broken item. Uh, you want them to have the ability to release it to that production environment, but also ensuring that it's quality code by running through the proper test. And interesting in, in uh, CICD, uh, it definitely lowers the staff cost through cost avoidance. So uh, developers or SREs or even admins, they save time because they avoid manual tasks that can lead to mistakes. So I know you guys probably heard the term of, of fat finger. Well, this happens on a daily. And so with, uh, with these processes, uh, if you're automating sort of the, you know, automating the automation delivery pipeline, you're able to then ensure that there are no issues when I'm deploying to an environment. And even if there are, I have the ability to have a stop gap in that process before it's released. So it, it improves uh, operation performance uh, and that really boosts confidence really uh, from a software de uh, development standpoint or infrastructure development. And that really boosts your service level. So it's, it's not a, a uh, coincidence that the leading organizations are, are more innovative um, and more technically sound, uh, you know, nowadays. So with continuous delivery, if you have the proper uh, debugging tools in place, they can pinpoint those issues and remediate them quickly. Um, yeah, hey, so- mm -hmm. can I, I, I hate to do that. I always put you on the spot, sorry. Um, is there all, all your years when you worked at Walmart, was there, could, is there an example of some of this that, that you just walked through, um, or like the, the fat fingered example or whatever, and then where the automation came into play and, you know, improve things, any, any kind of example like that at, at Walmart when you were there or, or any other client, just, just to share like a real world example. Oh, sure. So uh, at Walmart, I actually worked on the team that was responsible for deploying uh, servers across all of the Walmart environment. So every store, which was about, I think, 3,500 worldwide. <clears throat> uh, and there was actually a process to migrate from um, uh, AIX systems to, uh, to Linux. And so what we, what we uh, put in place uh, from an automation standpoint 
was uh, a continuous delivery tool that allowed us to remediate uh, issues. And so actually a security uh, professional uh, actually fat fingered the password to, uh, to our systems. And we actually had a, a, a process, an automated process to cycle each of the systems and reset the password. Uh, and so what happened was he actually uh, did not have the correct password, so no one knew it. Uh, and so with the uh, delivery automation in place, it was very simple to essentially send out a new change through the software to uh, remediate that issue. And so uh, you hear about similar things happening all the time. I think one of the issues with uh, uh, that happened a while back with Amazon that locked everyone out of their accounts was related to a fat uh, finger issue. And so uh, when those things happen, it's really uh, advantageous for you to have some continuous uh, delivery solution in place so that you can remediate them even faster. So the cost avoidance is immeasurable um, when you're dealing with this level of automation. Good stuff, thanks. So uh, continuous delivery really allows uh, some of the leading technology companies to deploy much faster. So Amazon says they deploy every 11.7 seconds. That's like insane. But if you think about it, I mean, you're probably talking about over, you know, 10,000 services that are backed by even more applications, right? Probably about, you know, you know, hundreds of applications per service. So when you're dealing with that amount of or those amount of like applications, you'll want to have some type of automated process for delivering those services. Um, Facebook claims that they release between 500 and 700 deployments per day. And I can believe it, right? They're, these are some of the leaders uh, in innovation and uh, they actually create a lot of processes from the networking stack all the way to uh, deploying the software. So integrating all of those components, uh, when you have your networking engineers working with your, your software engineers, you can, you can see how you'd be able to create um, some more streamlined solutions. Um, <clears throat> so here's just a, 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 a slide here that talks through um, what the difference is between CI, CD, um, continuous deployment and continuous testing. So um, mainly what I, I want you guys to get from this is the, the stages in the uh, DevOps pipeline. Um, these are usually consistent across every organization. Um, and of course they may vary in terms of uh, the, what those logic gates or those stages are called, but you typically have a continuous integration process that involves packaging your software. Uh, the continuous testing process is included in that generally. And then the delivery process of deploying that software to some environment. Now, uh, an example for with Facebook, for instance, they have a web service, right? Facebook.com. Uh, but then they also have an app service uh, where you're actually downloading an application from one of the uh, uh, stores, right? App Store, as an example. <clears throat> and so the process to deliver the application service from a continuous delivery standpoint is different from the web service, the web service between the apps, the app, the app that you download. But you can imagine how those two processes would still follow the same stages in order to be released to our customers, right? So uh, visualize that through these uh, diagrams here uh, when we talk about the pipeline components. And then the last stage here is, is uh, monitoring. Uh, and that really just talks about over the life cycle of an application, being able to uh, service it, right? To provide, um, you know, updates if things are broken or monitoring the service level, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. 
Now, here's some of the tools that actually uh, help you achieve some of these goals. We don't talk a lot about tools. Uh, again, it's more about um, process and a people. And again, they're, they're tools to really achieve anything or any level of automation uh, that you want. But you really want to focus on uh, putting the right people in, in place to select the right tools uh, based on the process that uh, the business provides. And so um, the, those challenges are essentially solved using uh, these tools. And some of these, um, as you can see, like Jenkins, right? Um, those tools can be used really across continuous testing and delivery. Um, so keep that in mind um, that a lot of the tools sort of play across both um, functional areas or all of the functional areas. Um, uh, and if you guys want to know more, I guess, you know, definitely send me, uh, send me an email and, and um, I can provide some information. All right, so due to, to, to numerous dependencies uh, to, to execute code, there's really a huge gap that falls between uh, when we write the code and when it's deployed for the business value. So uh, some of those challenges are, are, are seen up front uh, and um, leadership has some, you know, sometimes have issues really investing in or seeing the value in automation uh, because again, you, you'll have to essentially um, pay up front to see that, that value, right? Whether it is through time spent on developing that process or whether it's actually dollars spent investing in tools that may or may not be used uh, in the long haul. So uh, because of this, a lot of organizations uh, who implement DevOps without a true uh, agile framework, they will struggle initially. Uh, also, when uh, moving to cloud environments, um, you know, initially there's a, a cost to uh, migrating to that environment, but then learning a new, uh, new software. And so a lot of times organizations are implementing their solutions in the cloud erroneously in their first iteration, but then as they are using Agile to iterate, iterate through those uh, fixes, they can release a better product sort of the second go around where they're taking advantage of some of the cloud um, and, and its elasticity, right? And being able to uh, uh, expand, if you will, or um, uh, decrease their infrastructure or software as the uh, their needs grow for their business. Now, here are, are some of the, the people that are involved uh, and some of the roles that are involved in, um, you know, creating a DevOps framework or DevOps pipeline. I won't go into detail about each one of those, but just take this slide and and I'm really uh, you know focused on some of the descriptions here uh, around uh, automation engineer. Uh, it could be a DevOps or agile coach in some organizations. Um, <clears throat> but uh, what you'll usually find is, is um, you know a, a software developer or a DevOps engineer that play multiple roles or multiple hats depending on the size of the shop. So uh, really more so focus on the, the, uh, this, this, the uh, description of the roles instead of the roles themselves. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, continuous automation process. <clears throat> and so uh, continuous automation is really the practice of automating every aspect of the uh, application lifecycle. So when we think of continuous automation and we talk about the DevOps pipeline, 
we have those stages that, that require us to build and package our software and then deliver it to some environment. Well, when we're, we're, we're thinking about 10,000 to 20,000 applications, we will want them to follow the same exact process. Um, so while there are thousands of applications, we really generally only use, you know, a few pieces of software programming languages, right? So we'll have Java, we'll have maybe Python, um, uh, Groovy is a, another one, uh, Go, which is uh, Golang, which is um, the Google language or developed by Google. Um, it's really popular now, right? So you're developing those applications using those tools. And each one of those tools have their own processes for testing or delivering to some pipeline. And so when you have these larger organizations, you really want to create standards around delivering those applications consistently. And that's where continuous automation comes to play. <clears throat> uh, and so when you define what those stages or what those logic gates are, for releasing your infrastructure or software, then you want to develop software that manages those components themselves. And that is really where you turn into, you know, DevOps as a service, uh, creating service platforms for, um, you know, organizations like uh, State Farm, where <clears throat> you're able to collectively onboard thousands of applications uh, in a given quarter. Uh, and so those are some of the ways and, and uh, uh, some of the, uh, yeah, some of the ways that you would use continuous automation to speed up and make a more efficient product. <clears throat> um, and speed is usually measured by uh, deployment frequency um, and then the time from committing. So making those changes that we talked about and then deploying it. So continuous automation definitely helps with that. And I think you can, you can definitely see how um, that is the case. Uh, and then uh, risk management, which is measured by, um, you know, the quality of, so of the software that you're changing. So uh, compliance and, and audit frequency um, is, is easy to see, right? You have a, a more, more of an, uh, an audit trail because all of the, updates come in the form of software <clears throat> um, and then um, efficiency which is the mean time to recover and uh, you know the change failure rate how often am i actually releasing software that needs to be remediated quickly um, <clears throat> and so those are some of the benefits that you'll you'll see immediately when you uh, move towards continuous automation So, uh, you know, some of the benefits really of, of automation and, and using Agile to, to sort of drive a lot of the work that's required for automation is that you have, uh, you know, smaller code changes. And with that, you generally have fewer uh, unintended consequences. So imagine how easy it is to if I have a long list of tasks to, um, to perform, uh, you know, I'm doing it manually and, you know, I, I forget what that first or second task was. Uh, the same applies for a developer who's making updates to changes, they forget. And so because of that, uh, and if you don't have that automation in place, you can potentially deploy, deploy things that are impactful. Uh, and so allowing uh, those, you know, more senior leaders to provide some code analysis on the software that you're delivering um, and deploying before you're introducing those risks um, is where automation comes into play. So again, cost avoidance, uh, remediation, uh, mean time to recover or resolution. These are the things that that allow and, and are, are beneficial for using and, and deploying automation along with CICD uh, and DevOps. All right, so uh, here's a, 
an example of a, a DevOps application delivery pipeline. Um, and so uh, hopefully um, you guys can notice here that the goal is to deploy an application to an environment. And uh, if you're using the previous slides where we talked through the DevOps roles, uh, this is where some of those uh, DevOps roles play into providing um, updates or providing work within that pipeline. So um, a, a developer would essentially push some code or some changes feature uh, or bug fix. And then that software goes through a build process, which involves this testing and possibly deploying a performance uh, test <clears throat> through some lower environment and then moving it on to production. Uh, and so this is again, an example of application delivery, but the same can be applied to infrastructure delivery as well. And so the, the organizations that are really thriving at DevOps treat all of their organization services and components as software. And so you, you can now see how, um, you know, documentation is handled through software. Um, now I'm able to properly package and bake in all of the requirements from a security perspective or from a um, you know PCI or compliance perspective into the delivery of an application or service. So here's an example of the infrastructure and application uh, pipeline being delivered together. Uh, and so you guys if you have any questions definitely provide um, um, you know, shout me out on, on, on LinkedIn or, um, or provide, uh, I'll provide my email here and you can guys can definitely send me out an email. And here's the, the final slide here where we talk through uh, the scum, scrum process in general. Uh, with Agile, we perform uh, these the different agile ceremonies. So we'll have one to four week sprints, uh, daily standups that act as a way for us to quickly resolve any issues um, that may have come up, uh, define any stories that need to be prioritized um, and really discuss what changes need to be made before uh, our retrospect, our review and our retrospective. And so this is an example of how the business side of planning uh, integrates with a CI CD pipeline for releasing some software. And again, remember that Agile and DevOps work together um, opposed so, to- Brian, mm -hmm. Brian, just a question about that. So you said they work together. Do yeah. they both have, <clears throat> do they both have their items for the backlog? in the same backlog or does the DevOps group, the teams that are working together with the business, are they, do they have their own backlog or do they share? And well, I guess I would call those like enablers uh, in terms, terms of maybe some stuff that the DevOps team needs to do. So they would have their, their uh, they would have the same backlog. So the agile process would feed work into a DevOps pipeline. Does that make sense? Yep, that makes sense. So from a project management perspective, we know that Agile works the, the best, right? Uh, so we wanna include that as, uh, you know, process deliverables into, and funnel that into our ability to deliver the tech, technological needs uh, which in turn is the software uh, and the infrastructure components <clears throat> needed to deploy uh, some service or uh, application. So again, that collection of work is uh, usually done on the agile side and it 
works hand in hand with DevOps because we're now able to apply what we know in, in the CIC, from a CICD perspective uh, and then further automate the delivery of each of those components to uh, make our customers happy. All right, so here are a couple resources uh, that I'll leave you guys with. Uh, definitely the Phoenix Project. If you guys are in IT or interested in IT, this tell is a tell-all book <laughs> uh, and probably will speak to a lot of areas in your organization that may need to be uh, <laughs> looked at and, and uh, possibly um, evaluated in a way uh, where DevOps could be advantageous and uh, you know could act as a, a way for them to transform their digital operations. Uh, and then the DevOps Handbook, uh, also written by Gene Kim um, and John Willis, who are some of the DevOps evangelists uh, in the field. So definitely check those out if you're looking to get into DevOps and talk a lot about automation and agility as well. So guys, that's all I had. I uh, really appreciate you guys, Victor, for having us um, and um, look forward to um, possibly working with you guys in the future.